sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. Paschal solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestow on the faithful the fire of your glory. Defy this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today. The Alpha and the Omega. All times. Belong to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and for by his holy and glorious wounds may Christ our Lord Guard and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ. The light of Christ. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, 
No hoeing and end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of her voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy one. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us. Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. 
O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ, O happy fault that turned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for our God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please, please carefully extinguish your candle. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate 
on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing food on it to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. From the book of Genesis. God put Abram to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. 
As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught in the thorns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who, through the Paschal mystery, make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, 
so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and tur so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All the Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, like with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw that the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. 
almighty and eternal God, be present in this sacrament of your love. Send your spirit of adoption on those to be born again in baptism. And may the work of our humble ministry be brought to perfection by your mighty power. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who are baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him we know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak, on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, Behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. The others who accompanied them also told this to the apostles. But their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent, bent down, and saw the burial clause alone. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen, alleluia. Death has died, alleluia. The forces of evil have been destroyed, alleluia. I read an article, it was published in the Jerusalem Post. I read it online, I don't get the Jerusalem Post. But it was a long article talking about uh, medieval Europe and the uh, celebration of Easter and it said that uh, normally on Easter the priest in preaching would tell jokes and sometimes the jokes are kind of coarse and I, I found that very interesting and because I already knew of an article that I read years ago that in some places in the world, particularly in Central and Eastern Europe. The day after Easter is dedicated to telling jokes. I'm not going to tell any jokes. I'm bad. Maybe I'll ask Deacon Carter to tell a joke later. <laughs> and it might seem strange, really, to associate Easter with uh, the telling of jokes, but there's a real religious significance uh, behind it all. On Easter, today, 
this night, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And the joke is on the devil. He has become the buffoon, the silly one who's tripped over his own feet. In the Garden of Eden, after the first man, Adam, had fallen for his deception, the devil must have thought, and with some good evidence, now I got him. Humankind is mine. And we could have, use our spiritual imagination seeing the evil one smile in smug satisfaction. He had made himself, at least in his own mind, a god, small g. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the well-laid plans of our buffoon began to unravel. Jesus, when tempted to take the easy way out, unlike the disobedient Adam, says, not my will, Father, but thy, thine will be done. And yet, we can imagine the devil being unperturbed. He watched in satisfaction, we can imagine, as the perfect, obedient, beloved son of the Father was condemned, spat upon, crowned with thorns, beaten, jeered at, and finally nailed to a cross. Told in the gospel that darkness covered the earth. Evil seemed to reign. It was the devil's hour. And we can imagine his gleeful laugh. But, as they say, he who laughs last, laughs best. When the sun began to rise in that cemetery garden, the true eternal king of the universe confidently walked from his grave. In him, Death had died. Sin was conquered by grace. The gates of heaven were flung open, and the devil, we imagine, stood stupefied. A bozo hit mortally in the face with a pie. The Easter joke is on the evil one. Have a good time. Laugh. Be fearless. Be bold. Live because we know that the victory is Christ. Death has died. Christ is risen. Alleluia.
Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these brothers and sisters in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the fount of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. The litany. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God. 
You give us grace through sacramental signs which tell of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use the gift of water which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan River, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism by the power of the Holy Spirit, give to the water of give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism, all those whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to a new life of innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this fount. May all who have been buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to the newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give him glory and praise forever. So, for those who are about to be baptized, we'll ask you now to make vows to God at this, your baptism day. For all of us here who are already baptized, let's renew our baptismal promises. If you don't believe the things that I'm about to ask you, don't say anything. I would say, pray for the gift of faith, which the Lord, at the right moment, will give you. If you do believe these things, after I have asked the questions, if you would respond in a loud, clear, convicted voice, and I even want to hear the choir, to each uh, question, say, I do. So, are you ready? Good. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is the faith of the church, and this is the faith in which these people are about to be baptized.
So just bow, just bow over. You can, but put your head down. Colleen, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll stay there. Be baptized? No. Yes. <laughs> Carrie Ann, don't be scared. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, I need that. You have the prayer for me? Please make sure. The God of power and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin and brought you to new life through the water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you. Smell that. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. May you live as a member of Christ. Amen. Amen. Abigail. You want to be baptized, right? Abigail, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Commander, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Stephen, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, God.
And remain standing, please, and to recall our own baptism, we'll all be sprinkled. We're waiting for the newly baptized to come back in their baptismal garments. So, Joe, what would you like to do in the meantime? <laughs> what are we going to sing? Well, if you don't have anything, I'm going to start right now. Okay, let's sing one verse of Amazing Grace. Ready? Choir?
that hallelujah. Let's do that hallelujah one time again. Yeah, hallelujah. You can sit down while you're waiting. Are you ready for another song? Otherwise, I'm going to lead. Let's sing Holy God, We Praise Thy Name, the song every Catholic knows. Ready? No? I guess. You're ready? Tell them to come right now. You can come now. Let's sing, Holy God, we praise thy name. Ready? Everybody. Holy God. Sisters and brothers, you have become a new creation and you have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen.
Please come forward to give the newly baptized the light of Christ. baptized to receive the candle. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. Would everyone kindly stand? Come down, my Newly baptized brothers and sisters, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out his Holy Spirit upon these newly baptized to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Francis of Assisi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Christopher Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Vincent de Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jude, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Benedict Joseph Labre, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John Connolly, with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
peace be with you. And also with you. Let's give them a hand. God bless you. I'm so... We are so incredibly thankful for you. For you to go back. You may be seated right now. In peace we pray, and the response is, Lord, graciously hear us. us. Strengthen the church, the presence of the risen Christ in the world. May your mercy and grace be upon her in her sacred mission. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Inspire all those who were received into the church this night. May the promise and grace of the sacraments of initiation fill their hearts with faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Console all in need, the sick, the lonely, the unemployed, the refugee. May they find solace in the promise of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Uphold this assembly. May the love and truth that you have poured into our hearts sustain us in all we do. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant every needed blessing to the parishioners of the Cathedral of St. Jude the Apostle. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless all who have died marked as Christ's own forever. May the risen Lord receive them into the fullness of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let us now offer the prayers and petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Particularly for the health and well-being of our bishop. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious and loving God, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sisters pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her, throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and the apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, but they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth. Father, by communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all the saints. 
We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in commemoration, communion with those whose memories we venerate, especially the most glorious ever Virgin Mary. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, in giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In a humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace 
and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the peace and the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life. You bless them and make them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. So Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. But to only say the word, my soul shall be
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I, I want to thank all who have made this uh, Easter liturgy and anticipating tomorrow so beautiful. And I thank in no particular order of importance uh, our music ministry, the readers, the servers, the ushers, the parish staff here at St. Jude, the Cathedral Environmental Committee, the sacristans, the St. Joseph workers, the RCIA team, especially the catechists, uh, my brother uh, deacons and uh, priests uh, here tonight. I want to thank uh, Bishop Parks for uh, delegating me to uh, celebrate this Mass. Did I forget anybody, Father? Deacons, I forget anybody. Be good, thank you. Okay. Yes, I thank you too. <laughs> that was my next paragraph. <laughs> to everyone here, your love for the Lord and His holy people is outstanding and evident, or you wouldn't be here tonight. May uh, the risen Christ fill all of us with his divine mercy, and with exuberant and contagious Easter joy. The Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to the feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.